and the third republic was just for a short time they also established some and they were able to manage those facilities up to this point so you are talking of legacies handed over to you you want to dispose of those legacies let us not forget the story of the prodigal son in the bible and he goes that he had goes to biblical yes the the, <laughs> the, the story of the uh, prodigal son that had to dwell with everything just because he he wanted to have fun and at the end of the day he even lost the phone so it is important we address the critical issue and the critical issue here is absence, the absence of acumen. managerial acumen now uh, you have uh, some of this information at your fingertips especially when it comes to the history of certain assets we've been able to sell a few we've been able to leave some dormant one of them being left dormant is uh, just around the corner here, um, the former um, secretariat. Okay, now, okay. If, if that had been put into proper use, I'm playing, you know, devil's advocate, if you, if you might call it that. If that has been put into proper use, don't you think that would have been a source of revenue for maybe the government or look, look, okay, look the individual? Look, 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 okay, now, look at the edifice you just mentioned. I'm not holding forth for any public institution, but we have a critical a vital public institution here in Lagos, Nigerian Institute of International Affairs. Nigerian Institute of International Affairs is challenged by space and also facilities. Mm. Why can't you have, why can't you ask NIA to acquire that? Because NIA has a lot of um, uh, 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 programs to run, a lot of activities to run. In fact, you should be running, uh, uh, um, you, uh, you, should, you, should, you should be running courses and programs in addition to um, the other intellectual activities that he does, is in fact when it comes to research into international relations, is number one in the country. Is Nigeria's version of uh, Chatham House London. But lo and behold, Nigeria of International Affairs and IAA Lagos does not have um, enough space. Enough space to be able to do all that. So why don't you say Nigeria of International Affairs acquire that? So that you could utilize that for your classrooms to be able to run uh, as many progressive programs as possible. It has not been done. It has not been done. And Nigeria is not the only country that has moved uh, its capital to another location. Nigeria shares a lot with USA in that regard. USA is not having its third capital. The first was Philadelphia. From Philadelphia, it moved to New York. From New York, it now moved to Washington, D.C. A wonderful city named after a man who gave a lot for the progress of his country. Talking about uh, General George Washington. If you go to Philadelphia today, you will still see the evidence or evidences of the fact that once upon a time, that was the capital of USA. You go to New York, it is the same thing. In fact, it is in Philadelphia that they sat to draft the constitution they are using today in the year 1787. Yeah, so if you come to Lagos, so, you also see things to tell you that, yes, at a point, Lagos was... Those facilities in uh, Philadelphia and in New York are still being preserved because they are part of their national heritage and they are still being utilized to run the country. Didn't you hear of a time when uh, there was even a clamor to sell the Tafa Bella Square mm -hmm. to have money to be able to run the, the budget? If you sell Tafa Bella Square, it means you have sold the country because it was at that place on the historic day of Saturday, October 1, 1960, that the official representative of the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth II, Princess Alexandra of Kent, because Queen Elizabeth uh, Elizabeth II couldn't make it, so he sent a member of the royal family, Princess Alexandra of Kent, to represent her. It was at that venue that Nigeria received the instrument of uh, sovereignty from Princess Alexandra, and it was handed over to Nigeria's first and only Prime Minister, Saoba Katafa Belewa. All right, let's go on to some other. Some other if you sell a place like that, it means you have sold the country. It means that 
you can't be talking of heritage that will help you to deepen your development in terms of uh, tourism. Right. The critical issue is perceived absence of managerial acumen. And we, hope that and we have seen that a great deal beginning from 1999 when uh, the Fourth Republic was introduced. This is a time for Nigerians to begin to make a demand that for you to be a counselor, you ought to have attained a certain level of uh, 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 managerial experience. It is important. And perhaps it could also be extended to civil service also, so that this thing should be made to, uh, uh, um, uh, should be stretched to the hills. And at the end of the day, the country will be better for it. Back to you. All right, so now let's... Uh some of the headlines here. AGF has named FG as sponsors of Anambra Killings uh, Assembly. That's according to Assembly. On sports, La Liga, Chikweze ranked Africa's second most expensive player. XSGF, Lawal, knew nothing about 544 million naira contract fraud. EFCC witness. Also on sports, Lagos fans boo Eagles, praise CAR players. All right. And uh, this very interesting headline, if you ask me. Uh, this one has it, still from the punching paper. Police free 187 Zampara kidnapped victims feeding on grass for 52 days. That's 187 Zampara kidnapped victims. Let's uh, take a deeper look into that story. Now, we hear that the Zamfara State Police Command has been able to rescue 187 kidnapped victims who have been eating grass in Bandit's Den for 52 days. And this is due to lack of food. Now, the victims who were kidnapped in different parts of the state were reportedly left with no food by the bandits and then they resorted to eating grass in order to survive. We also hear that one of the victims who gave her name as Iklima Mutala, uh, told a particular daily, which is the Punch newspaper now, as we're taking this report from the Punch, that 17 persons allegedly died as a result of starvation. All right. And uh, she's quoted as saying that when they took us to their place, they gave us food for only a few days and later stopped supplying the food. We were left with no option but to begin eating some edible grass in order to survive. Uh, 17 of us died and even when we were brought to uh, Gusau, two people also died. All right. Uh, we have, <clears throat> excuse me, we some of the victims on behalf of the, the government. Secretary to the state government, Alahaji Kabiru Balarabi said the state government will continue to put pressure on the bandits until they finally give up. All right. What do you think about this? Uh, well, it's a good thing they've been rescued. Um, well, it is heartwarming, but the question to ask uh, is this. Uh, okay, now look at uh, the, uh, the other angle you, you also came up uh, with, uh, that uh, the government will continue to uh, bring uh, pressure to bear on, on the, on the uh, yes, on the criminally mandated elements until they are able to release uh, the rest. Why are we talking of um, government putting uh, uh, pressure on them. Why is it that um, uh, that act of criminality has uh, persisted up to now? And again, you also mentioned the, the, uh, uh, the fact that the, kid, uh, uh, the victims had to resort to the eating of grass. It, it also takes me back to uh, what happened um, during the uh, uh, the period uh, of the civil war from July 6, 1967 to January 15, 1970 when uh, there was um, a shortfall. In fact, there, there was shortage in food supply and of course uh, people had to um, resort to uh, consuming some food items that um, had not fully matured indeed. In fact, um, hibiscus flour was used at a point to uh, even prepare soup and of course cassava that um, usually uh, stays for 11 months going to 12 months to attain maturity 
uh, was even harvested uh, now, when how, it was just about uh, to the lives of those that definitely that definitely definitely um all was not well and uh, uh, it created uh, uh, some contradictions um, in some people's uh, system just as um just as uh, uh, what you just said, the scenario you painted. So the issue now is why have we continued uh, to uh, to be talking of uh, to uh, terrorism, banditry, abduction up till now? Why are we saying that um, the relevant security agencies are not in a position to deal with the situation? Yes, you will continue to have. Um, uh, one form of problem or the other, for as long as human beings are concerned. But to have it on the scale that we do have it now, to the extent that uh, education of, of some individuals appear to be constantly disrupted, is, is, is not something that um, should be um, continued to be accommodated. It is important that the security agencies move in to ensure that uh, they take hold of the situation and of course, uh, begin to um, bring things to normalcy. And the starting point is to begin to uh, uh, ascertain those who are behind the, the act. That's the starting point. That will enable the perpetrators to be neutralized. You need to ascertain those who appear to be um, fueling or sponsoring uh, the particular act of criminality. And with that, uh, the job will be made much easier. It's not just uh, a matter of just uh, um, uh, constantly asking for more funds. No. Use the relevant um, uh, uh, capacity you have. And every security agency appears to have an intelligence unit. So there should be uh, a reasonable degree of collaboration. This is not the time for security agencies to begin to see themselves as competitors. No. All of you should see yourselves as collaborators, as people fighting towards the same uh, cause. Right. And of course, uh, ensure that you establish um, those behind the art of criminality in question. Now, that's ab abduction. And that the job will be made much easier. Back All, to right you. Then. All right, then. So let's take um, headlines from the Vanguard newspaper. All right, from the Vanga, the first headline says, Someone look back Tinubu's pres presidential bid as 2023. APC clears Nasara State LG poll, preserving history of Lagos with 1851 Agadini game. And then Pandora Papers, I broke no law, says OB, official refusal to declare bandits as. Terrorist is another headline. And two policemen, two lawyers, eight others killed as gunmen attack communities in Ebron. Our debt levels still within sustainable limits, says Buhari. Suspension of Obi, unacceptable, null and void, as Edo PDP. Nigeria at 61, time for introspection. Anambra Goba, Ozibo, Soludo. Uba make INEC final list for November 6 poll. All right. APC says 2022 budget designed to accelerate FG's ongoing diversification of economy and BOL becomes signatory to UN responsible banking principles. Grazing reserves a, a gunpowder keg and... Nigeria Dr. Osaho Enabu Lele Imaji's President's World Medical Association and Northeast residents wants PD's passage of 2022 appropriation bill. CBN commits over 1.3 1 1 trillion naira. To boost in the economy. All right, uh, Malachi, that's, that's a barrage of you know headlines there. Let's touch on a few and then we'll start taking responses from our listeners. Quickly to the Nigerian uh, medical expert who has emerged um, as president of the World Medical Association. It, it tells you a lot about um, the level of expertise that is domiciled uh, within the country. It is unfortunate that 
sometimes um, you will find uh, um, the experts not being uh, reasonably encouraged to stay back home to be able to continue to contribute to national development. But uh, a Nigerian leading uh, the medical doctors uh, all over the world reminds me of uh, many dec decades ago when um, the renowned philanthropist, social cru uh, crusader, and of course medical doctor, uh, Dr. Akani Ibiam, emerging as one of the six presidents of the World Council of Churches, and he was in that position for many years indeed. May he so rest in perfect peace. So, congratulations to that Nigerian. And quickly to um, the need to preserve uh, tourism, or if you like the history of Lagos dating back to 1851. Uh, if we talk of uh, the history of Lagos, and um, our takeoff point is uh, 1851, we have really not done well, indeed. The history of Lagos stretches back, uh, in fact, um, as far back as 15th century, Lagos was already in the news, indeed. Portuguese explorers were coming uh, to uh, Lagos. Actually, the real name, uh, 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 the name of Lagos used to be Eko. So perhaps, uh, as we make progress with nation building, this is also one of the things uh, to be considered. Yes, the, the when you want to really bring out the essence of uh, of, of the city, you now mention Eko. It it speaks volumes about the city. So we need to go beyond 1851. 1851 was just the year that Lagos was attacked by uh, Britain. So, and that cannot be our takeoff point. The story of Lagos uh, stretches beyond 1851. Yes, so, so that, that cannot be that at all. But definitely, Lagos has a lot as far as uh, the tourism development of Nigeria is concerned. Quickly to the uh, story that you mentioned uh, that has to do with, um, um, I think uh, I have covered uh, all of them for now. So okay. back to you. Yeah. All right, and so we'll take a uh, take a little breather. When we come back, we will taking your responses via text and also via Facebook. Don't forget the numbers to send your messages to are 0810-608-1681 and 0818-608. 202-5883. We'll be back in a bit. Ninety-seven or seven Metro Film. Let's go straight to your messages now. Um, I have this one here. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Oh yes. Well, I have this one here. This one is from Kunle Shomori from Oshodi, and he writes, um, "Good morning, Metro crew. As a quote, no nation can raise above the sanity of its leaders. INEC should be given power to ban political leaders." who parleys with people of uh, assassinated characters as they are the causes of this current insecurity in the North and South. Let's save Na Naija now. Kunle Shomori from Oshodi. All right, thank you very much, Kunle, for your message. Um, this one here reads, this is from Uzo Dinma, and he reads, Good morning, um, Moses, Munura, Didamola, and Malaki. The proposed 2022 budget is unrealistic. It is speculative, bogus, and unimplementable. It is a usual yearly ritual which will not impact on the lives of the citizens. We need to do away with bogus budgets and um, embrace realistic and implementable budgets. Currently, we spend 100% of our revenue 
on debt servicing and we are on the verge of borrowing to service existing debts. It is worrisome that FG intends to borrow 6 trillion naira to fund deficit in 2022 budget. I wonder the rationality. It is absolute nonsense according to him. Honestly, I am not impressed. I am indeed agonizing. And that's coming from Uzodima. Nige. All right, this one here reads, uh, this is from Barista Ugo Osuji, and it reads, um, sell refineries, moribund assets in order to balance budget 2022 presupposes cursing our forefathers that built them in the first place. A budget 2022 that is spatch choked with emotional intelligence and sweet talk to sell the idea of a fictitious growing GDP from 1999 till date, how many refineries have been built by all incoming governments to show cause of good governance and make life worth living for the poor masses? None. When evil prevails, the when evil prevails and impious men bear sway, indeed, the post of honor becomes a private station. How did we come to this sorry pass? When borrowing is now a fad. Barista Ugo Osuji from Festa Town. Why, why not governments suspend next year budget since they want to borrow to finance the budget? This is from Chika Umukabia in Abia State. Right. And this one says... Um, how, how will we run the nation if that is that really? I understand uh, being being sarcastic, but it's it's fine. All right. I don't know why federal government is finding it hard to expose the sponsors of all right. Um Buhari must do the needful to stop sponsors of uh, Yes, in Nigeria. This will Buhara? reduce money okay. borrowing that is common in his government. Idima Puza from Surulere. All right. This one here from Chijoke reads why is Malachi stressing himself really? <laughs> Is it not better Nigeria is officially put on sale instead of mortgaging it with excess borrowings without any commensurate output? Why is the killing of the DSS by police in Ore not making the news? And then he says, press people self, very quiet. May God deliver us. May God deliver us all. Good morning, Metro FM Moses. Um it's Munirat, not Basirat, Malaki and others. My take is on the issue of the economy. Can the government find solutions to the rising cost of living? People are dying, yet governments pretend as if all is well. All is not well, though. Thanks. Benoba for, uh, Solomon. Yes. Benoba Solomon. Yes. All right. Uh, this one here, Onya from Lagos, writes in. He says, in addition to the expert's advice, slashing jumbo allowances of political office holders will also help, truth be told, Obiano and other Southeast leaders have lost grip of their region. They should work with FG to deal with growing insecurity and stop pointing and accusing fingers. All right. Good morning, Metro crew. Moses Monirat and Dr. Malaki. If the advice of the experts on the sale of refinery is to curb the siphoning of public fund, I want to ask, where is the EFCC in the fight against corruption that, that freed abducted people that freed abducted people in Zamfara fed okay. That freed abducted people fed in Zamfara fed on grass while about thirty of them died is a shame of a nation. God help Nigeria. Emmanuel Oromadi. Ojota. All right. Uh, God help us. Ginger Igwa too from Ikeja sent in this one. Says, um, good morning, Metro crew. Support. Okay. <laughs> uh, well, he says, uh, why not start? From day one now. Uh, now, left book around to talk of new sponsors. We must call a spade a spade. Alright? Kidnappers are using ransom to mock Nigerians. That is why uh, they have followers. Alright? God help Nigeria, he ends by saying. Jinja Iguatsu from Ikeja. Jinja, thank you very much for your message. You will not um, send me out of job. <laughs> In Jesus' name, I pray. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, more headlines here. Uh, Kochila sent in this one saying, Good morning, Metro Group. Uh, with presenter Alahaja Munura 
Shehu. <laughs> okay, thanks for the compliments. And Professor Malakai, uh, Malaki, he says, Happy Friday to you all. Happy Friday to you too. Please, I want to ask, did the federal government actually know how bad Nigerian roads are? Some time ago, I had heavy trucks blocked uh, Mina, La, La Paibida Road. I don't know why, until when I traveled to that part of the country. It pains me that I can't share the video I recorded here. I want Mr. Raji Fashala to actually know that, know that for sure there is absolutely judgment day. Islamic Bank has approved millions of dollars for that project. Uh, let us see how they are absolutely going to spend the money. And that's coming from Kochila at Abulu Yagba in Lagos. All right, uh, we have more headlines here. Nini from K2 says, um, uh, our analyst, okay, Metro Crew, our analyst, and good Nigerians. Good morning. Good morning to you too, Nini. This will actually sound funny. COVID vaccines, some people refuse to take hesitancy. Now, malaria had just had a vaccine also. The question now is, the question now is, are those hesitating COVID vaccine also uh, we'll hesitate taking malaria vaccine when it gets to us. I think they will take the malaria vaccine. If yes, they may be living in fool's paradise for hesitating COVID vaccine. All right, I get your point. I get your point. But, you know, if you want to be fair, if you want to be fair in judgment, vaccines take a long time to come. You know, it's not... Uh, I want to believe... Well, I have been vaccinated against COVID. So I'm not using this as an excuse to anybody in particular or for anybody in particular. But I want to be fair to some people who, who are hesitant, probably because they feel, oh, it came too quickly. You know, it came too quickly. There should be more clinical trials before it is put out there. But regardless, all right, it's been certified safe and you should go and get vaccinated. Hmm? I am a proud <laughs> vaccinated Nigerian. So you too should get vaccinated and stay safe. All right. Okay. Um, should I read this? Not exactly. Okay. <laughs> I will not. <laughs> All right. I still have more more headlines, more, more responses here. Uh, this one says, good morning, Metro crew from Steve, from Steve Ikelu, Maryland. Uh, well, he, he compliments Malachi. He says, our analyst, Dr. <laughs> You've been confirmed, <laughs> Malachi. Our analyst, Dr. Malachi, is a walking encyclopedia. Mm. All right? An achiever. Good morning. All right? Malachi is blushing, even though he doesn't want to show it. But it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Super Eagles lost yesterday in Lagos. Did NFF pay the coach? I don't know. Tell Buhari to sell Asu Rock and Sambisa Forest. Dakwe, Dakwe, Christian, Ota, Oku State. All right. Um, this one here, quite lengthy. So, uh, well, this one reads, this is Okafor Joseph from Onichuku. He says, what's our national economic heritage if refineries are all sold? Unless it is irreparable, we need ideological communion in political leadership. Corrupt, freed, uh, Nigerians, the entire jamboree. Intipid management's disposition in leadership is the end product of ethnic prejudice. Nigeria can't evolve, I repeat, unless we... I'm sorry, I... Okay, I'm going to skip to another part of your message that I understand. It says, uh, unless... Well, think of one Nigeria, adopt such mantra and project national ethos. Countries that evolved, like the USA. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you very much for your message. But, you know, it gets really confusing most times. Um, Okafor Joseph, reading your message. You know, because I think you're trying to respond to a lot of things at the same time. And that just clogs everything together. Uh, well, thank you very much for your message. We totally appreciate it. Uh, more messages here. Uh, Uzodima, I have taken your message before, I believe. And also, Solomon Benaba, we've read your message as well. We thank, we appreciate you sending sending it to this uh, um, 
portal as well. Dr. Malaki, because of because of your so many insights in history, just last week I volunteered to teach history in our school. The experience so far is really rewarding. I am uh-huh. wondering why that subject was removed from our schools in the first place. Uh, he, he goes on to say, PDP should zone presidency to the south, please. It is the turn of the southeast. John from Akute. Well, big ups, John. Congratulations, as you have turned a teacher, teaching history. We wish you the very best. Um, Steve Amorfoso sent in this one saying, uh, Good morning, Metro Crew. Good morning to you too, Steve. It is not surprising that this present administration is insisting on selling assets of the country because, it, uh, well, he says, according to him, lacks quality leadership. Uh, after all, well, he says the uh, administration is renovating Niger. Okay. <laughs> well, he says on government putting pressure on kidnappers, bandits to release kidnapped children instead of doing the needful is no news. Otherwise, it would have been either sending troops for drastic action straight away if it were to be uh, another part of the country. All right. Uh, he says, I maintain. Okay. Thank you very much, Steve Omar Fozor. Very, very um, sentimental in your message. All right. We do have some more headlines to touch on before the 7 o'clock hour where we take you to the network service of Radio Nigeria. Let's touch on some more headlines. All right. Shall we? All right. Um, cut down. Okay. So... Sorry, I need to. All right. Budget of growth raises doubt amid high debts and low incomes. PDP, PDP defers decision and presidency zones chairmanship seat to North. And uh, on sports outrage as Central African Republic stun Eagles. In Lagos, it was a it was a an embarrassing defeat, I must say. It was an embarrassing one, but um, that will tell us if we still have hope. Yeah, in other areas. Okay, um, more headlines here. Let's see now. Um, this one here reads: Count PDP out of emo security situation, says spokesman. Ohaneze, Pandef, Obiano, others fault FG over threat of emergency rule. In Anambra, Ogun, Governor Abiodo denies tampering with local council funds. Again, Isi Guzo emerges NUJ president as veterans task journalists on Better Nigeria. And uh, Minister seeks collaboration for healthcare development. All right, so these are some headlines that you can find in the Guardian newspaper. Well, okay. Thank you very much. Before we say oh, 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 bye bye indeed, uh, yeah, because we are just um, on the home uh, stretch. Very quickly, I want to commend uh, the gentleman, um, or rather the listener, yes, the, the gentleman who has uh, volunteered uh, to teach history in one of the Christian institutions uh, in Lagos. He, he, or, he may say that uh, he's just doing a little. I want to tell him that uh, he's contributing quite a lot to national development. It is a gap that is helping the country to fill. And uh, I want to say kudos to him. And uh, I, uh, please do not feel discouraged and continue to do that. I just hope that uh, he will do well to take it down to, to the base, uh, probably as low as uh, kindergarten even, uh, so that uh, from that stage, a uh, proper foundation uh, will be laid. Congratulations to him once again. Very quickly to the headline that has to do with uh, the proposed emergency rule uh, for Anambra State or an Anambra State. Indeed, uh, if you go ahead to have an emergency rule just because of um, perhaps one or two security breaches in Anambra State, what has happened in Anambra State cannot be compared to what is happening in other states. So if you now latch on to just one or two security breaches and you now have an emergency rule at a time when the state is preparing for election 
you have not helped matters because indeed emergency room will uh, at the end of the day uh, create um, a problem giving some people electoral advantage and giving some people electoral setback so uh, it is better uh, it is not proposed at all not to talk of uh, being implemented you will always have security breaches in different parts of the country for as long as uh, the nation has not indeed um, uh, dealt a devastating blow with um, insecurity which is indeed uh, ravaging the, the entire country once you can deal with that definitely the occasional occurrences you see in Iron Brass State perhaps will, will, will also be taken care of. But definitely what has happened in Iron Brass State is not enough to be talking of um, uh, emergency rule or having an emergency situation in Iron Brass State. Certainly not. It cannot be compared to what has happened in a place like Kaduna State, for instance. So the problem in Iron Brass State could still be handled by indeed empowering the re relevant security agencies but it is important that you also do the needful and, and what is the needful allow persons from the area to drive security operations if in a situation you have um, a commission of police not, not uh, precisely from anambra state but from southeast geopolitical zone definitely he will know a lot about the cultural nuances uh, of the place and he will know how to mobilize uh, uh, the people and of course uh, the divisional police um, uh, uh, officers you have them from the from the zone the southeast geopolitical zone they will know what to do because they understand the terrain to also uh, uh, lead operations and, um, and mobilize their men into action emergency uh, situation or rule is should, should not be on our cards now certainly not very quickly to one important uh, uh, um, rationed by some listeners talking about borrowing. Indeed, each time we go out borrowing, we compare ourselves to some of the countries of the first world. Yes, countries of the first world and second world, they do borrow. But you can't compare them with Nigeria. They don't borrow, they are not on their knees. They can as well do without uh, borrowing and continue to manage. And of course, they have been able to manage. After all, some of the grants that come to developing countries, including Nigeria, come from some of those uh, uh, first and second countries of the world. So they are not on their knees, indeed. They can afford to do without um, uh, going a borrowing. And we should be asking ourselves, if we continue to borrow in a manner that we will now have conditions that are unfavorable to us, definitely it is time for us to have a rethink and begin to see how to be utilizing some of the funds we need from our savings, All right, indeed, then. and we can afford to save. All right, then. And save, we will attempt as a country. All right, so that's uh, this is where we draw the curtains today on Newspaper Review, AM Lagos Live. AM Lagos Live continues as we go to the network service for the network news. And when we return, more great music, great conversation, Great programs right here. My name is Moses Humphrey. Big thanks to producer uh, to producer Adida Molati Jani and uh, my colleague Munira yeah. Shehu. Uh, Mal Malaki, Malaki Ugu, thank you very much for coming on the program. As thank well. you very and much indeed. Thank you to the network service for the network news.